When I first started doing altered landscapes, um, it was more of an exploration, going in my car, driving around North America, searching for things. I didn't know exactly where they were or what they looked like, so it was always this kind of adventure and discovery. And what's changed over the different themes uh, and over the years is now with the assistance of the web and being able to look at things in, in, in more depth before I go there, I can actually predetermine my pictures. So in the water project more than ever, when I was going to a location, I knew pretty close. I was very, you know, almost, you know, assured that the images that I would get uh, would be of that nature. So it was far more intentional now than it was in the past. And to there. Pretty well so this, so this is a, this would be an amazing like three to four o'clock shot. Yeah, that would put it at right there. Same right there. Yeah. We have a, a, a deep human desire to be in the presence of water. So I tried to find the imagery and the ideas that spoke to that. So it led me to the Kumbh Mela Festival, the largest pilgrimage of humans on the planet. Uh, but their, pil their pilgrimage is to water, is to you know, the cleansing power of water, the spiritual need for the cleansing power of water. This looks private, no? The guy with the motorcycle and bike? There's a little flat spot there. Well, can you ask those guys who live here? I can do a big, and you can probably even do a pan across it like this. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty good. So I was allowing the subject matter to determine where to be. I, I worked backwards from the subject matter to the point of view. And in this project, for the first time, completely released myself from gravity, that the point of view would be wherever it is. And that was interesting, so I, it was a very much a global approach to the idea of water with no restrictions as to where I can stand. And so the whole body of work grew with understanding that I was willing to position myself, you know, short of going into outer space, but I can position myself, you know, within up to 10,000 feet from the subject. That was, a, for me, a very uh, interesting creative jump where I've always been held back in my previous projects through costs and through um, you know sheer logistics and, and film and what its possibilities are and operating a camera remotely. But with all the new technology, I can operate a camera a thousand feet away from me on a helicopter and bring it back and have images that I can blow up to 60 by 80 and they're tack sharp. Chip is in. Yep. We're good to roll. Okay. Looking good.
So that was a kind of an evolution of subject matter, technology, and using um, all the tools, everything from remote helicopters to lifts to helicopters to fixed wing planes to a 50 foot pneumatic pole. All those things were all about where do I stand? So that is the second generation. Yeah. Do we know how to work the radios? Yeah. Have we got a instructions? I think we're good for that. Okay. Let's get these guys okay, they're going. up in the air, Jim. We'll okay. see if we do have to get out while the blades are turning, we'll want to go low, possibly in rolling. You want to be conscious to any potential terrain change because it does get you pretty close to the rotors. Questions? Good to go. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. I've absolutely liberated myself of where I get to stand. If I want to be anywhere, I will be there. I'll find a way to be there. So, and it's, it's quite interesting when you kind of release yourself from gravity, so to speak, and, 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 and uh, find that you can make the point of view anywhere that you want it to be. They look really great in the big size. This is the one that I would like to support probably. Just run through them as well. Okay, so this one, the only thing. That's this one. Facing Whatever for Spain? Yes. This okay. is, what's, it called? what's the title of this one? This one is. It makes such a difference seeing the real thing. This looks very washed out. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, this is nice too. So, what stage are we at with this? It's, it's a, a work in progress, right? It is kind of bonkers. It's a desert region, but it's, uh, in the winter it gets enough rain. So they plant like late fall, November, and then they harvest in, in the spring. So this is a kind of a very ancient form of farming. One season in the winter, the rain it gets allows for one crop, that's it. This is a sustainable form of farming evolved over uh, multiple generations. It allows us to take what we need from the land without depleting it. Water is not optional. That to me, as a, as a liquid, it was the ultimate thing that provides for life. And if it's missing, uh, you know, humans have to leave that area if they don't have it. It's as simple as that. <laughs> 